Utility continues to win the day. Look at the headline of this piece from AMB Crypto. XRPL Labs Weetze Wind unveils web monetization enabled music player on Coiled, with, of course, XRPL Labs being uh, an entity founded by Weetze Wind. Uh, which is funded through Ripple's Spring Initiative. We'd say is also the creator of the XRP Tipbot. Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. So I'm going to be running through that piece. Got a couple tweets from XRP community members I'm looking forward to sharing with you. And then I'll wrap up the video with an article from Coindesk titled Fearing USD Decline, XCFTC Heads Propose a Blockchain-Based Digital Dollar. And this is a concept that keeps coming up, especially with uh, China. They've actually come up with some sort of new and improved digital version of, uh, of the, the Chinese fiat currency yuan. And I have question because the details have been somewhat sparse on specifically what this looks like. Some have stated, no, this is not like literally not blockchain. And then there's people like me that have stated, even if it's blockchain, what additional problem are you solving? Why is that better than a traditional database or whatever technology is used to make sure there is accurate and efficient debiting and crediting of traditional fiat currency? Now, before we get rolling here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would please delicately tap that like button, uh, just very delicately, you don't want to break the thing, and if you would, consider, just consider subscribing to the Moon Lambo channel, it does about a good. So let's go ahead and dig into this first piece here. XRPL Labs lead developer Weetze Wind gave new meaning to digital rights management, DRM, in a Twitter thread called it, uh, calling it, Donations Right to the Musician. The lead developer was impressed by the idea of enabling, do enabling donations for artists and has built a means for artists to monetize their content on Coil. And take a look at this. And we talked about this conceptually. I didn't think I'd see something uh, get done about it so soon. So this idea came from Craig DeWitt. Uh, he, right here, he described himself as product at Ripple. Uh, I don't remember what the exact title is. Uh, maybe he's, I can't remember, director of product at Ripple, maybe that's what it is. But anyway, this is his actual Twitter profile here, and I covered a piece, uh, because it ended up in Crypto Media, where he's talking about this idea to do exactly what Wheat Say Wind just, just did here. So very cool stuff, moved rather quickly. So take a look at this tweet from Wheat Say Wind. This morning, I stumbled upon a great idea by at Crypto CWBY, I'm guessing that's short for Crypto Cowboy, is that reasonable to guess? So at Crypto Cowboy, and at Alloy Networks, and I couldn't resist. A web monetization coil enabled music player donating to artists straight from the MP3 ID3 tag. And then he's, of course, got a little cool emoji with the shades there, like that. Uh, and then he's got a proof of concept here. If you click on this, you do need to have a, uh, a web browser that is has a coil uh, web monetization enabled right there if you want to check that out. Right. Uh, Coil enables content creators from everywhere to share their content online while getting paid in micropayments for every second through the subscription fees paid by subscribers. Thus, the choice of platform was clear as he wanted to showcase how existing tech, ID3 tags and MP3s, and the equivalents in any other file format uh, can contain payment pointers, Wind told AMB Crypto. Wind added that he wanted to manifest how a site slash platform can use these tags to dynamically send donations to another payment pointer, especially with the ease with which this can be built. Wind informed, and look at this, here's a tweet, another one from Wheat Say Wind. Hey at Jamendo and at Free Music Archive, have you heard about web monetization and COIL? Make what you love without having to sell it. With Coil, you can monetize your content online without relying on ads. I created a live demo music player, and then there's another link right there, where you, again, do need a web monetized... Uh, well, you need, you need a, uh, a web browser that is... Well, of course... It, what, what, seriously, what uh, what browser can't do this now? But you just need to have a Coil account, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> all right. And then uh, he had another response to his own tweet there. Um, all you need is a few lines of JavaScript code in your web player, and a payment pointer per artist can even be a Twitter account using the XRP tip bot. The payment pointer can be in the songs ID3 or from your own database. Happy to implement this with slash for you for free. 
And so this is the coolest thing on the planet. Of course, we love coral. Why would we not love coral? I hope this takes over the planet because I, if you, if you know me, if you know good old Moon Lambo here, you know that I, I do not like web advertisements. And what I like even less than that is paywalls. How many times have you come across an article with an interesting headline you'd like to read, and you click on it only to find out that, oh, you must subscribe to so-and-so website? Ugh, nothing really burns my biscuits quite like that. And so that's why I really hope, big picture, that Coil continues to find traction here. But it's fascinating because, again, uh, Coil uses a blend of interledger protocol, which just connects ledgers, not just cryptocurrency, but also traditional ledgers. It uses ILP and a blend of XRP as well. You're talking about streaming payments in real time. This is the coolest thing on the planet, is it not? Anyway, when cited Ripple's director of products, Craig DeWitt, for this idea. DeWitt informed the company on October 13th of an XRPL side project that would allow MP4 downloads for direct XRP donations to the artists. DeWitt provided the community with an update on October 16th, saying that he was working on a beta and had been looking for beta testers. And it's, it's true enough, you know, in, in terms of web monetization, the way it works right now, if, if you were the biggest, one of the biggest platforms on the planet, it could be, you know, pick it, you know, it could be YouTube, for example. You know, you, you can have a successful ad revenue model, but if you're just a little independent blogger prior to a you know, payment option like this, web monetization like this, whether you're a little blogger or a music creator, whatever it may be, it's hard to get your content uh, set up in a way that it can be sufficiently reasonably monetized if you have your own little website there. But this fixes the problem. Anyway, DeWitt appreciated Wynn's efforts towards building this web monetization product and sought the developer's permission to embed this into his personal project. According to DeWitt, a combination of streaming payments and music, uh, I'm sorry, and direct music purchases is a powerful idea and a great user experience. Absolutely, this is going to change the way in, in which content created by whatever, whoever the artist is, it's going to change the way in which it's distributed. That's, that. who knows, that I suspect as long as this ends up getting adopted, it could have a profound impact on society in general. Anyway, despite the fact that DeWitt's idea inspired Wind to create his product, they differ in essence. Wind, when asked about what distinguishes his product from DeWitt's, told AMB Crypto, quote, It's different from what Craig is doing. He's building something to actually sell the MP3 files for XRP, not using ILP but the XRP ledger, also a great development. Um, and then the piece wraps up. Apart from the web monetization product, Wynn's some signing platform will see integration with XRP Toolkit by Towo Labs. I'm assuming that how that's, that's pronounced. Anyway, uh, so very cool stuff here. Uh, take a look at this tweet from Stephen the Bull, uh, Stephen Bull from the Deep. I hope I'm saying that right. It's D-I-E-P. Is it Deep? 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 I, I don't know. You tell me. And he tweets, I don't see anyone from XRP community talking down on other coins. Why? Because we are too busy at every moment trying to catch up with good news and back-to-back -back updates from the amazing Ripple team. XRP holders, we are in the best time of human history. And indeed, it's quite fascinating. And R Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse talked about this in a recent podcast with Anthony Pompliano. And he, he was talking about... Uh, I don't know that he used the word maximalism, but he was talking about the concept because it, the whole XRP army thing, you know, hashtag XRP army. What's that all about? Where did that come from? And Brad was pretty well de defending it, just stating, hey, it's really more so to, in a response to uh, FUD attacks from, from uh, you know, people that are... I would say tribal. That's that's. My, I don't know that Brad said tribal. I'm just kind of pulling from memory here. But uh, he acknowledged what I have... I mean, I've long held this stance. That when you're talking about people from the XRP community, quote-unquote, arguing against people in other crypto communities, it's it's almost always in defense. You can find some bad apples. You can find some people that are rude in any group. Fine, whatever. But uh, look, the XRP community, it's like the nicest, most educated bunch of people I've ever found. <laughs> it's, it's amazing to me. They're, to me, they just seem like really educated, savvy investors that get big picture of what's happening. They, they, they realize, this is just my, my perspective, I feel like the people that are really part of this community, which I'm sure includes you listening to this, it's an XRP-centric channel, it's like, you know you found something early, that's how you feel, isn't it? And you just wish that other people could see it sometimes. But uh, others in crypto, certain crypto communities, eh, not, not so much. And that comes down to ideology a lot of the time. But from my perspective, 
with what's happening here, the way that XRP is being positioned as a bridge currency for cross-border payments by Ripple, there's no need for some sort of tri tribalism. There's no need for some sort of ideology behind it. We're just talking about moving money around the world more efficiently. But if you're in, a, I don't know, the Bitcoin camp, and I'm appreciative of Bitcoin, don't get me wrong, and I'm not saying everybody that's uh, on the Bitcoin side and doesn't like XRP, I'm not saying they're all bad people, but a lot of them feel like they need to defend their coin and tear down anything that isn't Bitcoin that's a cryptocurrency because, frankly, uh, they see it as a threat. And if, if you're talking about something that, to your core, it's just part of your ideology, of course you're going to see stuff like that. But with, with XRP and with Ripple and other and Coil, other developers building on top of the ledger, what's been so fascinating to me is it's an endless stream of good news and real-world adoption. It seems like every other day or sometimes every day for a number of days in a row, especially lately, I've commented on this on the channel, I've been like, I don't know what to call my video sometimes because to, to differentiate it because it's another Ripple Spring uh, investment. You know, I just there's been just so many of these lately. Uh, so, so to me, I, I couldn't be more positive, more optimistic. And I, I just, uh, from my perspective, it just makes sense to just stay away from those that are the most negative. It, it's okay to correct uh, FUD. It's, uh, it's okay to get back at people. But uh, from my perspective, I'm always going to seek to do it uh, from a more responsible adult perspective. Just my humble opinion, but uh, to each their own. Take a look at this next tweet. This is awesome. This is from Mr. BXRP, who tweets out, Thank you, Ripple, for inviting me to swell. And on behalf of the XRP community, I am most definitely attending. My plan to represent our community in being your eyes and ears and sharing all that is allowed. I am honored to be invited and in representing the community. And I reported yesterday, this, this one's from today, but I reported yesterday that the digital asset investor, one of my most favorite XRP YouTubers, he was invited to swell by Ripple. So he's flying to Singapore for this. It's amazing. And <laughs> Wow. And uh, he found out uh, he, he actually wasn't the only one. There were multiple people from the XRP community that had been invited. Uh, Brad Kimes with his channel Investment Perspectives was invited, another XRP YouTuber. Um, Alex Cobb was invited. Um, he ended up turning it down. Scheduling-wise, apparently it didn't work out. I don't know if he announced any other specifics. I could have missed that. So that's four right there. And if there were others, I, I'm probably just unaware. But just scrolling through my Twitter feed, those are the ones I was aware of. And then uh, Ripple did invite me to swell also, but... Um, we had a kind of like a little falling out in terms of, you know, like what the setup would look like, because one of the things that was a sticking point for me was um, I insisted that I have a booth so that I could sell Moon Lambo merchandise. And they said that was a no go. And I was like, I don't know about that. So it's kind of a deal breaker for me. So, yeah, I guess I'm not going to swell. You guys know none of that's true, right? Like, they, they, they did not invite Moon Level. They did not. I'll tell you what. I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if they're going to invite uh, somebody from the XRP community with a name as stupid as Moon Level. So, I don't know. I'm just teasing. <laughs> but, um, then again, you know, I remember, um, you know, Digital Asset Investor talking about Swell about a year ago. And uh, at the time, the, the stance was, you know, you didn't see necessarily a ton of interactivity not specifically from Ripple as it pertains to the XRP community. There's some exceptions, like for instance, they highlighted Hodor, and they actually on the actual website and they highlighted um, they did an actual interview with Hodor because he's just so prolific within the XRP community. An awesome blogger. I know he's wrapped it down now. I want that down. I had a video about that too. So unfortunately, that blog's gone. But uh, it's not that they they didn't ever acknowledge anything at all. But I remember XR. I'm sorry, a digital asset investor. Just kind of saying, like, yeah, I don't think that they're going to be uh, be a respondent to me or <laughs> in regards to Swell. And it's just funny enough, you fast forward a year, and wow, they're inviting him and other XRP community members. I think it's the coolest thing on the planet. So uh, I'm very happy for all these people, and I look forward to hearing uh, what they report back. All right, now I got this next piece from XRP Crypto Wolf, and thank you very much, good sir, for sending this my way. And it is titled, Fearing USD Decline, XCFTC Heads Propose a Blockchain-Based Digital Dollar. Two former heads of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, are offering up a plan for a government-sanctioned blockchain-based digital dollar. In an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal published October 15th, J. Christopher Giancarlo, a former CFTC chair, and Daniel Gorfin, former director of Lab CFTC, Watchdog's experimental initiative proposed a blockchain protocol to digitize cash to allow the dollar to compete in the new digital era. 
Their USD-backed stablecoin is envisioned for daily transactions both domestically and abroad. Created and administered by a non-governmental group, uh, the program would be dependent on participation from the Federal Reserve, commercial banks, non-bank intermediaries, technology companies, and social media platforms. The reliant on trusted, regulated intermediaries to maintain digital wallets and validate transactions, this distributed ledger payment system would hold advantages over the current monetary system. In particular, Giancarlo and Gorfain highlighted the higher transaction speeds, the ability to make micropayments, as well as increased security and transparency enabled by cryptocurrencies. Beginning with a pilot, Giancarlo and Gorfin recognize that no perfect solution exists to address the challenges and promises of digital currency, nor can anyone predict all the technological advances these efforts will generate. And so, there you go. I, I understand there's efficiencies associated with cryptocurrencies, but in terms of what real problem is actually being solved, I don't know, I'm kind of skeptical. A little, a little bit. Is this really needed? Is it fundamentally going to change anything? Are other countries really getting ahead if they have some sort of uh, new digital currency, like what China's doing, which some people say is blockchain, and some people literally say it absolutely by definition is not? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. <laughs> I, I it's, it's hard to verify this type of thing, certainly. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it makes me think back to something Brad Garlinghouse cited, because he was talking about ACH transfers in the, in the United States, and he said Ripple could do it better, right? But he said also that ACH, it works pretty well, just that Ripple could do it better. And so I guess his, his point kind of was... Uh, if it's not a huge pain point, is it something that we even need to go after? And certainly the answer, at least right now, is no, and that's quite clear. And I just wonder to what degree is this going to, to solve any sort of existing problem. So I'm open-minded. If there's a reasonable case for this to, 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 to for things to move in this direction, okay. But uh, even if so, do you think the U.S. government is going to stop printing money? No, <laughs> of course not. But... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap up the video at that point. Curious to hear your thoughts on this. Feel free to drop a comment below. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.